in time. I'm going to do a flip through today of my latest journal. This one I am calling Second Nature and it is kind of a spinoff of the last journal that I posted which was Lily of the Valley and I did use another Lily of the Valley pen as you can see and I'll start the video off by saying first of all that there will be time stamps below for anyone who um, does not like to hear my, my talking or my explanations of the different things that I've done. Um, I do tend to try to explain a lot of what I, I do in my journals, um, a lot of things that inspire me in case anyone tries to, um, you know, replicate a um, journal of their own. Um, I like to try to explain the things that I do so that you can get inspired, hopefully, from, from this journal and... Um, also, I like to point out the different items that I use, and all of this takes time because there are so many different things in the journal. So, I will put timestamps below for anyone that doesn't like to hear my rambling. Um, that will be below. You feel free to go down there and click on that little time, and it'll take you forward in that. And I also don't know how much splicing I'll have to do on this video because um, it is storming outside and... Uh, <laughs> For 17 years, I had a little dog that was horrified of bad weather, and we try, tried everything, um, the little um, storm, the thunder coats and all of that. We, we tried it all, and she was just horrified of bad weather, and we just um, lost her recently, and um, I, I did inherit one of, um, I, I did inherit my dad's doggies, and so I lost one dog that was horrified of bad weather and now inherited my dad's dogs and um, one of his dogs thinks that she can take on bad weather and so now every time it thunders one of his dog wants to um, fight the thunder so she takes off barking and chasing the thunder so I'm not sure how much edit editing I'm going to have to do every time it thunders we're probably going to have to pause the video for that so here we go um, one other thing I want to mention is that um, I filmed an entire flip through video of this journal and for a, a crazy reason um, I thought I was going to be having to change out the little pen here um, long story I won't get into it <laughs> but I'm not going to have to change out the pen um, it's a whole story to that but anyway um, I ended up deleting the video thinking I was going to be having to change some things on the cover and um, that's not going to happen but because I thought it was going to happen I deleted the the video and now I'm having to refilm and I'm worried that I'm going to get myself confused of as I'm doing the flip through of things that I thought I said because I may have said it in the previous video so we're going to fumble our way through this we are now three minutes into a video and I have not started hence the timestamps so here we go <laughs> i hope everyone is doing well and um, i know i say this about many of of my journals but because i tend to put so much of my heart and soul into my journals i do fall in love with my journals so i probably say this about many of my journals i know i do but i truly feel like this is one of my all-time favorite journals um, i love this journal and I'm not sure how much I can capture on video. I feel like I don't capture it all because I did go through and edit the previous video that I had filmed um, yesterday, day before yesterday, and it did not capture it. It's impossible to capture everything that's on this journal. And um, this is one of my, if not my all-time favorite journal that I've made. And um, I, I just absolutely love this journal. I do love Lily of the Valleys. I talk about that in the other journal that I made with the Lily of the Valley pen. This one, um, my pens that I had ordered did come in damaged. They were missing little um, dangles. This one is only missing one. Um, I did go through and pinch the little um, dangles on so that hopefully we don't lose any more. Um, but the one that's missing, I used that opportunity to stitch it on there. And then I stitched the pin on in other areas to the um, underlying clusters of lace and fabric and string. I have just clustered all kind of items inside this frame here. Um, 
underneath this pen. And then I grunged up the frame using gesso and inks and all kind of different mediums on that frame. I tuck in string and actually this little piece here, um, we went to Maine. Maine has always been on my bucket list of places to go. So we went to Maine um, last week. And if you're um, on my Facebook, I posted some, uh, my husband actually posted some pictures and tagged, me, tagged my Facebook on it. You can't take a bad picture in Maine. Maine is such a beautiful state. If any of you live there, you know. It may, I'm sure it has places that aren't beautiful, but we didn't find those places. It was beautiful. It was cold. We, we experienced a, a nor'easter there, and um, it was still beautiful. It was absolutely stunning. Um, I, I know why it was on my bucket list. I, I did not regret going there at all. It was beautiful. As you can see, I layered a piece of a book spine back here, all kinds of paper. You can see the different um, paper has writing showing through and um, stitches. Um, that's a piece of a photo mat um, frame there that's peeled off of an old photo mat from my old Victorian album. Um, a piece of a, a mixed media spiral um, piece of the paper there. Some writing here on this book cover, book cover. So a piece of the brass metal here and a piece of the brass metal here. This is a rusty, I don't know what this is, um, but I have secured it to the book covers here with some wax linen thread. And then hanging from this metal on the top and bottom of these book covers, I have um, a shell that has this gold tone, um, uh, I guess, uh, Wow, I've lost my words. I've been suffering from migraines this week um, and insomnia from the migraines. Um, so my words are not real clear today, but it's um, just this gold tone highlights, I guess, <laughs> edging on the shell. But that is a real shell. And um, then hanging here from the center, I uh, use the wax linen thread there. And then hanging from it is a piece of cord and I've braided the cord and I hung a um, piece of um, white jade um, elephant there and that is real. I have a handful of these that I have been hoarding and I only use them on special, special, when I, when I feel a tug to use these on a journal, I use them, but I use them sparingly. Um, and this was one I felt the tug to use it. And then I tied it off with a piece of twine there and a seed bead. And then hanging here off the bottom is a quartz crystal. And I've just wrapped some gold tone wire there around that. And so those are all hanging off of the side there of the journal. And then here on the center, I've already talked about the frame. Oh, and what I was telling you about this, so, you know, I've always talked about how I pick up everything that I find as I'm walking around. And this was in Maine. When I was in Maine, I found this long piece of, oh, I wish I could show you on my desk. Um, so... Uh, we went to this one, um, I guess, a beach area, and all of these rocks, and I have them over to the side, but I can't turn my camera right now, but um, there's driftwood and rope and all this stuff that had washed up, but off to the side, there was this big piece of rope, and tangled up in the rope is this, I guess it's a piece of the cord, but it almost looks like yarn but it's not I guess it's a piece of twine but it's frayed and so I pulled off some of the fraying and just kind of tucked it in right there and that's a piece of that so it was off the side of the ocean there on the beach it just kind of tangled up in this piece of rope that I found and so I just tucked a little piece of that right there 
and then uh, I already said the real piece of the spine of a book and then this is a um, piece of the wood that I found there and then some of the lace trim and then this came off of a necklace and I found this um, just in my stash of old jewelry but I found it when I was um, when I had done the spine here on this book I was looking to find a piece of jewelry and I don't know how well this is picking it up on camera but it just matched so perfectly with this odd piece so Dee had made these clusters for me a long time ago and in this one there is this beautiful peach of um, piece of this kind of a peachy pink dusty um, pink color mixed in with this one little piece of the snippet and I found this on that necklace and so I att attached it here and it is so beautiful and then I had placed an order through vintage polka dot shop and she had included in my order this little um, thank you gift of this beautiful um, old thin um, it's kind of a muslin and y'all it just it just came in as I was finishing up this journal and so it matched as well and it was just all such a happy little um, coincidence I think that word is serendipity serendipity and I was so happy so it just little things like that make me happy and so it all ties together so pretty and I put it so that it peeks out in different areas on the journal and it's so pretty so pretty but I love when little things like that come together in a journal over here on the side oh and then there's a little piece of a um, lily of the valley dangle there hanging and then the paintbrush I did do so that it's removable and grunged it up and then over here is some of the Avalon shell and I like it better facing outward um, whoever gets this journal I did do these very loose now they're on here secure but I, I and they're not functional in any way but I did stitch them so that they're loose but they're stitched on they're, they're not going anywhere but I stitched them so that they're loose and can spin around just in case the person likes them better so that they're see let me hold it up closer so that you can see they're kind of a um, multicolor on this side to where they have more of a creamy beige showing. See? Kind of a multi-tone. But if you spin them around, they're more white on the other side. So it's kind of a different look. And whoever gets the journal might like it better white. It's just a different look. And it's just your preference. Um, I would almost... I don't like things to be so loose and, and dangly like that on a journal because to me it makes it look like it's not um, secure when in fact these are stitched on I just stitched them on with some loose looseness you know some play with the thread but whoever gets the journal if they want to go back and add some glue under there once they make a decision on how they like those they can add some glue under there to lock those in on whatever side they like to show and I did put some grungy paper under there so that um, if as they spin it around if it folds the fabric up it's still pretty to show either way so I did that so that you can play with it <laughs> and you can leave it loose there's nothing wrong with that either it, it can be an interactive thing um, I like it better on this side myself if I get to keep it, if it doesn't sell and I get to keep it, I'll leave them on that side. There's a lot of strings. People like strings. I like strings. I leave them so that the person can make their own decision whether or not to cut them off. Um, I like them. I leave them. Um, this is the spine view. This is the top view. There's a lot of string sticking out from the thickness of the spine like that. This is the bottom view. And this is the back. 
I did use the front of this green cover as the back because I like that little embossed emblem there. So, and I knew it would be covered up if I left it on the front by all of this layering. So I chose to use it as the back and then that would have left the spine because of me flipping it like that. So I folded the spine around and hand stitched it down and used it as a pen holder, but we'll talk about that at the end of the book. Okay, um, I think that's everything with the outside of the journal. I'm not gonna go over measurements because um, as of right now, my Etsy is still up. I am going to put my Etsy into a vacation mode um, pretty soon, probably in the next few days. Um, I do have some other journals that I am working on that I hopefully will be finishing up pretty soon. And I'm probably going to link those through my email, which is scribblesintime at gmail.com. Um, and you can reach out to me through my email. I will link that below. As of right now, my Etsy is still up, which is Scribbles in Time. I will link that below. But I will be putting my Etsy into vacation mode pretty soon. Um, I do also want to mention that as of right now, I do have some of the autograph album kits available in my Etsy. And that is what initially inspired the um, Lily of the Valley journal. journal. And I did use an autograph album in this with parts of an autograph album kit that's in my Etsy. Um, and so as of right now, my Etsy is still up and going. Um, I will be putting that in vacation mode pretty soon. If it's in vacation mode when you watch this video and you are interested in anything that I talk about in this video, reach out to me through my email and I will get back with you. Um, if my Etsy's still up, obviously you can purchase through my Etsy, um, but I am playing around with some ideas um, of things I'm going to be doing in the near future, and um, so I'm just putting that out there, and a lot of people are already, because of things I've said in the past on videos, a lot of people are already reaching out to me through email anyway. All right, let's go ahead and open her up and we will start looking at the inside. So when you open her up, um, I have done my normal style where I do a journal here on the front cover. Oh, and I was saying that I had pulled rulers out to measure and you can kind of get a comparison of size right here, but um, if this is listed in my Etsy, I will put all details of measurements there but as you can see, it's somewhere around eight inches with the um, embellishment sticking out and probably somewhere around nine inches tall. And then as far as all the um, depth of it with the stuff on the top cover and everything, we're probably approaching five inches um, thick with all that stuff sticking out and everything. So I've kind of laid a ruler here um, as far as number of pages, to me, what's important to know is number of writing surfaces and art surfaces, and that's very hard to um, count on my journals because there's writing surfaces and places to add writing and art. So I don't really attempt to give you a count of pages because of that. There's just too many places to write and add art pages and stuff so if you watch the flip through and and want to try to get a count as i flip through it i encourage you to do it that way because there's just too many opportunities to add your own surfaces it's impossible to give you a, a correct count so um we'll move forward with everything um you know that i have done to create this journal and it's kind of uh, a lot um, the first thing you kind of notice when you see the front is this precious little boy right here. It's kind of a Hummel um, style postcard. And I played around with putting this inside of a protective sleeve. And um, it, it was beautiful that way. And I'm going to do that on some journals. I have already purchased postcard sleeves for doing that. 
and um, started to with this one, but I love the rawness of this particular um, journal with this postcard just as is. So what I did is on the back board of that, I did a hole there and ran these cord, this cording, this um, kind of twine cording through that. And I did all kind of um, variations of the cord. So I, I kind of twisted some cords. I did a single cord and then another twisted cord. And then I went through and braided them all together and just kind of mingled in some little um, pieces of remnants of things, some string, some twine, some paper, just all different uh, little piece of tattered fabric, all kind of little items that were laying around on my desk. I just picked them up. There's a little piece of lace right there. I just picked up stuff that was laying around on my desk and just kind of mingled it in as I was um, braiding this and worked it all into the braid. And then I did um, this little felt ball at the end and attached it to the end of the braid with a little seed bead at the end. And so that kind of comes across this postcard journal that I'll show you in just a moment to kind of keep it latched off or closed when you open up this book here. And I hand stitched this piece coming down here and made a little loop there that you feed this um, felt ball through like that, just to kind of keep this closed off as you flip it open. Okay, so let's um, very quickly, we'll look at this little hand pieced thing here. So this is just all stitched on to this autograph book that's attached to the cover of the journal. And it's just some fabrics with trim and some of my, oh, my cherished antique buttons. So I went through and picked out some of my favorite buttons and just went down and I left the old original strings. If they had strings attached in them, I left the string. And then I just went through and stitched them on with my sloppy stitching, I am not a, it, I, I don't claim to be good at it. I love rawness of just trying to do things the way I imagine that they would have been done back in the 1800s before sewing machines. Sewing machines hate me. They hate me. So I don't use sewing machines a whole lot. <laughs> I have, um, gosh, I probably have three sewing machines and um, I do use my sewing machine, but I use it sparingly. Um, and I try to just haphazardly stitch things. That's just the way I do what I do. And I try to have fun with what I do, but I do try to oftentimes just do things the way I enjoy doing it. <laughs> and so I have just went through and did my own tattered stitching job there. And I stitched that onto this old autograph album here and so the autograph album has ranging dates on it and so I have stitched the autograph album onto the journal right here and I reinforced it all through here so it's stitched on and then I put an applique over it and I have reinforced it here and here and then I went through all of the pages and reinforced the pages. And as you can see, I don't, there's writing throughout and then there's also many blank pages throughout. But the dates in this range, like here's 1898, but here's 1884. So whoever autographed book this was, and that's what I love about this stash. Here's 1881, or is that 87? December 8th, 1880, I think that's 1887. But whoever did these books, like there's different owners of all my books, but back in that time, they weren't like, it, it wasn't like the world we live in today where we have so much stuff. This person who had this book had this book and they used it for 
you know, 15 years, this was what they used. And so it's got writing in it from 1884 on up to like 1898. And I love that. They, they pulled this book out and used it for years. And I just think that that is a different lifestyle of what we do today. I think today's world, here's 1886. I think in today's world, we just, we get something and it's a throwaway world. Here's 1904. We just kind of live in a throwaway society. I'm guilty of it myself. I get something and then I forget I have it and I move on to the next thing. And it's just kind of a disposable world we live in and it's sad. But I think they had things back then that they cherished a little bit better than what we do today. And it's just such a sweet, a sweet thing, a sweet little piece of history here. And I love that. Um, so there's the autograph portion of this book. And again, I do have kits in my shop if you're interested in trying to get a kit and create your own journal. Um, and then I made a little postcard um, journal. So this is a postcard here. And when you flip it open, I've hinged the postcard on with some fabric and these buttons and a piece of denim. And again, I just went through and did some stitching down the denim and stitched on the postcard. And this little tab says March. And then this is some cardboard and I've just grunged it up with um, gesso and inks. And then I've just tabbed in old paper. It's very old, thin paper. And this is a, a index um, tab it's stamped, it says um, 1932. Right here it says C in 1952. Here's um, a little wooden bead and it's wax linen thread here and then a little piece of twine tied underneath the wooden bead to hold that on. And here is a beautiful glass. I've I'm, I'm got a stash of these that I keep meaning to put in my Etsy shop. I need to do some of these in my shop. They're beautiful glass beads with some gold tone trim going around them. They're so pretty. So that does show on the outside of the journal when it's closed. And there's a little textured tab there. And then here on the back is some of that pretty um, kind of cheesecloth-y, dusty rose um, trim uh, fabric and scribbles in time with the lily of the valley there. And then I'll feed that back through this little loop to keep that closed. And then these are two of the old vintage buttons, and those are not functional in any way, and they're just loosely on so that they feel kind of old and tattered on there. And then I also like that you can, you know, get a piece of your trim, like I did it right here, and just kind of wrap it around the button so that it hangs out like that. And then here is a metal butterfly. Um, I started to call it a skewer. It's not a skewer. It's actually a like a hair. Um, it's a metal like a hair pick thing. I don't know what you call those, but it's beautiful. It's, I hope that's showing up good. And it's so pretty. It's just a, a beautiful accent piece there. And here is like a J sewn on. And then all kind of, this is a piece of the fabric off of, if I remember correctly, I think it came out of the inside of the autograph album where I removed it so that I could reinforce and sti stitch the, I said photograph album, I meant autograph album, onto the um, book cover. And then all kind of pieces of fabric there. And then here is... Um, 
I've gotten to where I call these to myself, and I, I don't know if I've ever even said this on camera before, but I've gotten to where I call these bird's nest. <laughs> um, so I attach in, it's supposed to kind of look like a tattered, torn out piece of a journal, but I've gotten to where I call them a bird's nest in my own journals um, because they're just so easy to tuck in stuff. I wish I had one of my journals nearby. So they're easy to tuck in stuff. And I had kind of showed it when I filmed this video before um, with just random stuff laying on my desk. And um, now I don't have stuff laying around like I did then. Um, so like it's just easy to tuck things in or you can attach things, but like you can just almost just tuck stuff in to have for later. like. If you write thoughts down, sometimes I'll write stuff down like a, a daily Bible verse. If we're, you know, like, and I'll jot it down on a piece of an envelope or something sitting by my chair in the mornings. And then you can tuck it into your journal to go back and either tape in later or write down on a page later. This is from that um, hopeful bird. I love these little things. But you can just tuck stuff in to go back and add later. Um, to the journal. Um, oh, oh, I love these pictures. Um, so yeah, you can tuck stuff in to use later. Or you can actually attach stuff, like, like you know, if you had written stuff, something on here that you want to stay there. Or say you wanted to use this as a tab in this journal, like right there. Or this, this would be a cool tab. I have fallen in love, y'all. You, you probably already know about this, but Rusty Staples, um, Kathy with Rust Paper Scissors. I never knew that they would work in my stapler so well, and I ordered a ton of her Rust, Rusty um, Staples. I don't know if my staples gonna fit right there, especially when I'm on camera, because I can't do things on camera like I, because I don't normally do. But she sells like in bulk her Rusty Staples, and they go in a normal stapler, and I never knew, I figured that they would just jam up the stapler, but they don't, they work, and I am like obsessed with them. I've already went in and ordered like a ton of her staple, her rusty staples, and I'm obsessed with them. I use them, you're gonna see them, all. look, they're all in this journal. I use them all the time now, like, I can't get enough of them. I love them, I just love them. Um, I use them all the time. <laughs> Look, that didn't even go through, but it's okay. Look, it's just on that piece of paper. But anyway, you can just stuff things in this bird's nest. That's what birds do when they build a nest. They just build the nest with stuff that's laying around. And that's what, to me, that's so cool. Look. But anyway, so I've gotten to where I tuck these things into my journals now, even in between signatures and stuff. And they're just perfect for little tuck spots and visual interest. Or you can actually attach notes into them and then here's the first page of the art portion of the journal and I just you utilize this page to attach all kind of stuff that made me happy and I don't know why it makes me happy this was a piece of the wood I found in Maine and I don't I don't know why um, this stuff makes me happy but it does this was a little piece of a gift bag um, that I love is crunchy and it's kind of see-through and I don't know why I loved it but I did and this is some beautiful old trim and the gold just looks so dainty and pretty from the outside of the journal and then this is all gessoed and y'all I love 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 I'll have to show it another time this video is getting way too long but I love doing the gesso on here and then using the um, Stabilo pencils and going in and doing the artwork um, and so, anyway, we'll get into that on another video. This is taking way too long. Um, these are just some cards I ordered from a company that have such cool quotes on them. Um, this is where I put a picture here, and I think this was a piece of Happy Mail that was a photocopy of a picture. So I did the rusty staples and stapled it here and just put a piece of laminate over it since it was a photocopy. And then this was a bag, and so inside the bag I just kind of um, stuffed some little goodies in there. Another one of the felt balls that hangs um, from the center of the signature. 
the other side of that bag, I just lined it with some little inspirational thoughts and then stuck a photograph in here that someone had sent me that's attached to an index card like that and then this is just a little flip with a cluster of fabric that I've done with a staple I'm telling y'all I'm so obsessed with these staples I'm probably late to the show on that I'm sure everybody else is already way addicted to those this was a piece of an old envelope. I just stuck it there because it made me happy. And this is a little mushroom zipper pouch. Um, I have a thousand of these that I'm going to... And then I've stuck some little goodies in here. Um, again, just stuff that makes me happy. This was out of that autograph album. It had come out and I started to hinge it in, um, you know, to secure it in when I attached it. But... I decided it would be better to put it in there, and if anyone gets the journal, they can hinge it in on a page. And um, this can be used as a bookmark or attached to a page, but it's so pretty poking up on the top of the journal. This has been laying on my desk forever. It was, um, so I had used, on the front of a journal I made a long time ago, I had used a, a music page um, that said, Hallelujah for the Cross. And on the other side, it said, Peace Be Still. And it has been laying on my desk forever. And if y'all saw my desk, y'all would know that it's a miracle for me to find anything. But this piece kept surfacing to the top of my desk for some reason while I was working on this journal. And I have had a hard time using it because I never wanted to, to glue it down and cover up either side. Because this one said, Praise Be Still, and this one said, Hallelujah for the Cross. And I didn't want to cover up either side. So finally, I just stuck it between cellophane on both sides so that both sides show. I don't know why. I don't know why. It was just screaming to be used on this journal for no reason. I don't know why. So I had to use it there, and there it is. So it, I don't know. Anyway, sometimes things just do that. Here's a whole cluster of the rusty staples. <laughs> And um, one of the old photo um, cards. And, um, yeah, this these aren't meant to last forever. They've already lasted beyond their lifetime, probably. So as this paper peels off, just glue it to a page. That's what I did somewhere I've already pointed out. Um, yeah, that stuff peels off real easy. Embrace it. Love it. Um, here's one of the horse head buttons, a gold piece of metal that I slapped some black paint off. The black paint will scratch off over time. Embrace that. See, look. Embrace it. Don't fight it. Let it happen. Um, there is a metal um, C stencil thingy, um, a feather, and then just all kind of collaging. And then on the other side, I love, love, love this stuff. I have bought rolls and rolls of it at this antique shop that I went to. I had this huge metal thing with just rolls of this stuff, and I don't even know what it is. It looks like crochet trim. Love it. And just did up this collage here and ran this through the signature, and it comes out on some other page over here. And here's one of those, um, what's his name? I'll... I'll Alpha something mucho or whatever. One of his cards. I'm just going to tuck that there. One of these really. So this is one of those hemming things. And I put a piece of that. Um, cheesecloth or whatever there. That, so that it shows from the outside. And one of these really cool vintage bags. It's stapled shut. It can be undone and something's hidden in it, like a little note or something hidden in it. But it has one of the metal tabs on it. I love those. I hoard those too. Um, and then here, this has one of the see-through. I don't know how well it's shown on camera, but it's the little girls laughing. And so... Um, I did it to where, to me, it's so pretty against that green. You can see the little girls through there. 
but it's also so pretty against the black so I tried to do it so that you could do it either way so this flips open you can do it that way so that you can see the little girls or you can lay the black down and do it that way see and then that page turns and this is a seed packet there's also a pocket it's kind of fidgety um, in fact we need to put a little tape right there let me get a piece of my tape I meant to do that so if y'all have not found this tape I need to put a link to it below I love 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 this tape get a piece of that tape right there if y'all have not found this tape so I ordered this off of Amazon this is some cool tape because you don't really have to age it that much it already looks full to me it does i mean it's not perfect it's not like aging your own tape but it's pretty close i like it i'm happy with it but um i'll put the link the amazon link below but i like it it already has that yellowed look to it can you see it um i like that tape and it sticks pretty well um but anyway, so this is an old seed packet, and I stitched it on so that you can use it as a pocket, but it is a little bit persnickety. Like, you have to kind of help feed it through. So I don't know how fun that will be to use. It might be one of those things that you end up just closing it off. I don't know. If I keep it, I'll probably end up just closing that off. It wasn't as fun as I thought to use. And just another art page there. And that's the last page. This is the back of the book here. I used two more vintage buttons. And then here is where I folded the spine of this book around and hand stitched it all the way down through the cover. So that's really hard to do if you've never done that. Um, and then I put, this is one of my absolute favorite pens to journal with. Y'all, I bought these pens, not this one, but I bought some of these pens like 25 years ago at a Hallmark store. Um, and I saved them for years until they all dried out. But these used to be my favorite pens to write with. And then recently I stumbled across them on Amazon so I'll put that link below too but what I love about these pens is they have a really fine point I love to write with them and um, they have brown ink so to me when you write they just come off looking almost like older ink see it's because it's like brown so I love 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 these pens um, I'll put the link for them below. But anyway, um, I love to journal with these pens. It's like a felt tip, but it's like a real fine tip. And because it's brown ink, I love it. When you wet it, like when it gets wet, it almost, it, it um, I think I did it in here somewhere. Yeah, right there. It, it bleeds and it almost has like a purpley look to it. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I appreciate y'all hanging in there with me. Oh, here's the other charm that I hung from the center right there. And um, my neighbor passed away several years ago and had given me this. And I parted with it. And that's that. Anyway, um, so that's the end of the video. Thanks for hanging in with me. I absolutely love, love, love this journal. Like I said, this one, this one really touched my heart. Um, I used some sentimental pieces. I used pieces that are just precious to me. And um, I love it. I hope that you do. Most importantly, I hope that it inspires you. Get out there and create. Know that you are loved. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, reach out to me. You can email me. I've given you my email. I'll link it below. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm here if you have any questions. I don't always respond through the comments, but I do read every single comment. I promise I do. And um, I love you all. Y'all have a blessed day.